It's uh, Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. I'm going to do my tea shot today, and I was talking about some of the negative side effects of doing tea. I'm almost finished editing the video. It's actually taken me a week to do that. I guess I thought about a few more things. One thing I wanted to mention was the increase in sex drive, which can be kind of complicated. How previously I was talking about having a lot of acne on your face and how embarrassing that can be and not wanting to be social because of it, because of uh, your embarrassment about it. And then you also at the same time have this incredible amount of um, not just sex drive, but your, your ambition and drive in general is increased. So it's kind of difficult to deal with those two different, um, they're not really side effects, but they're just an effect of how testosterone acts on your, it's not really a body thing, it's it's your state of mind. And that does kind of, like the high sex drive and stuff does kind of mellow out after a while. And I mean like anywhere from, like you can get used to it in like six to eight months, or it can take like a year and a half or longer, either for it to feel like toned down a bit or for you to like get used to it or adjust to it like adjust your it could be like your habits in dating or your how you deal with it um, or how you learn to redirect that energy for myself i decided to be really advantageous about going to school and working on projects of my own and also like exercising and being healthy, so it was all positive things, but I was really, like, you have a tremendous amount of drive towards that. I also, like, I didn't want to date early into my transition, not just because of the acne, but because I was going to school and I wanted to focus on that, and I was still uncomfortable with my body. There's a stage where I haven't had top surgery yet, so I was uncomfortable being in a relationship with that. My bad, like, physicality is still there, and that aspect still there about myself. Um, I wanted to look more masculine before I started dating again. I think I waited two or three years, actually, before I even, like, made a Tinder profile, okay, Cupid stuff. Also with that, my experience is that I have not been successful in dating since I've transitioned. I did transition a long time ago. It's been seven or eight years now. It's challenging being a, a trans person that it seems to me to be the opposite of trans women's experience. So I've heard, um, I hear a lot of trans women saying they have men like really going after them. Maybe it's in a superficial way as dating a, a, trans, a trans woman, somebody who's different than a cis woman. So it's like a sexual experiment to a lot of men maybe. I haven't heard a lot of stories around dating. I have been watching more YouTube channels around that topic just to understand is this because the trans person is newly into their transition that they're experiencing a lot of reciprocation around relationships or that they're just not aware that the men who are interested in trans women are just interested in the sexual experience and not actually being with a trans woman long term. I know there are couples obviously who do have long term relationships, but actually the more I watch, the more I see that, like I hear this story often that trans women have a lot of short term relationships and are struggling to find a long term relationship. For myself, at first I was interested in experiencing, um, I, it didn't matter if it was short or long term, I just wanted to have like a, like my body masculine, a masculine presenting sexual experience. I am looking for a partner, but I haven't had any luck in even dating somebody, so um, at this point I'm just kind of like, hope to find somebody that I find attractive to have something with like whether it's a few dates or a relationship like it doesn't or a friendship even like it doesn't really matter to me um i'm also demisexual and pansexual so uh, it's more about the connection with the person for me i don't feel like i can have 
I can't really have a just a sexual experience without feeling connected to the person. Like it wouldn't do anything for me. I wouldn't be fully present. It wouldn't really be me because I don't have a reciprocal. Like, it's really hard for me to trust people. So that's where the demisexual part comes in. Like I need to be friends with the person first before I feel I can trust them, before I feel like I can even start to open up about what my desires are in any sort of romantic way. So that's really challenging to deal with when you're getting no responses or the responses are like, you pass really well, no response after that. Or go on one date and then totally brick wall me after, like no responses after like two or three text messages where I'm just like, hey, how's it going? What about that second date you said you wanted to go on? So it's just really hard when you're socially isolated and like looking for a friend and any potential friend either is a cis guy who wants to have sex with you in a way that you don't want to have sex and that's all they're looking for or they're a you know, these are common things, tropes, I guess, uh, common things that I experience, like, or there is this woman who finds out you're trans and then doesn't want to respond anymore, or there uh, a trans woman who thought you were cis and, like, they don't want to contact me anymore because I'm not cis enough for them or whatever, <laughs> like, or, like, there's, like, lots of reasons, I guess, but... What it comes down to is that I'm single and I have been since I've transitioned and the only thing about me that's changed really is that I've transitioned and I'm more comfortable with myself and I know who I am and what I expect from people which is like I have self-respect, I expect others to respect me and I expect others to respect themselves so I'm not going to have any more like codependent relationships i'm not going to have a relationship that starts too quickly i'm not going to have one that starts too slowly i expect respect so if people that i meet can't provide that then it's not going to work and like i would prefer to be with another trans person or non-binary person so that they understand that aspect of my life but um like I'm open to anybody, but I've had like even worse luck with cis people. So I spend maybe I would say sixty percent of my time now, whereas before it used to be a higher percent. Like looking for trans people to like friendship, dating, or relationship, like any of those. But yeah, I just haven't. Um, it's like a negative side effect of taking tea, I guess, is that you can become really socially isolated and people start to think like, you know, if you come out, then they're fetishizing you or if you, like, I don't know, it's just really weird. Like, I don't know how to solve it or how to fix it or what to do or, like, I have no answers around that one um, and I, I struggle with it. Like, it can be challenging, like, and there's really no right or wrong way to act, like, as a guy, and you shouldn't have to feel like you have to act a certain way to develop friendships or relationships. It creates a lot of self-doubt in me of, like, am I being too open or not open enough? Am I showing too much emotion or not enough emotion? How do men act, you know? How do, what, what is it to be a man, you know, um, when really it, there's all sorts of men and I don't think that there's any right or wrong way to act like and I, I really believe that no matter how long it takes when it's the right time I'll find the right person who will be with me but at the same time like having these I guess side effects of, of testosterone of like just tremendous drive and ambition and sexual desire and drive and just having to bottle that all up inside and like I do put it places like I, I create 
work and, and I exercise and I, I do stuff, but it, it doesn't really replace a, a family or a friendship or a relationship um, that you want to have. So, and I've tried other things to kind of like try to, I guess, dull the pain of, of it because like I touch here, because it hurts my heart, you know, like it, it's very hurtful to consistently be told no or be stood up or to have people outright like physically attack you for it, you know, like, I, you know, I've had many injuries from being uh, gender non-conforming and being mistaken for a, a femme gay man, like, that's why my lip was split, like from the front all the way up inside, because the people attacking me thought I was a very effeminate gay man. It's why my nose was broken, because I was gender non-conforming and it wasn't accepted in my high school. So it can be challenging to to have drive and ambition like um, heightened because of testosterone, and then be consistently told that you can't do something or prevented from doing something positive, you know, that you can't date so-and-so or develop a friendship with so-and-so or continue going to school or continue working at the job you're very passionate about or get a new job that might enable you to make more YouTube videos or something, right? So to be caught in these like kind of catch-22s. Or people to see you transition who knew you before and after and then suddenly you start saying you're an angry person or you're you look like you're mad all the time but really your face just changed to become masculine and i've never been really much of a smiler anyway so nothing has changed so other than my my gender like the testosterone changed the shape of my face to make this beard, to make it more square, to create hair loss. It changed my body to look male. People have an obvious prejudice against uh, gendered presentations. And it's very obvious when you change genders, how society treated you as a woman compared to being a man. That's a very real side effect from taking testosterone is how society interacts with you. Yeah, that's my thoughts around that for now. Um, I still do my testosterone shot, so if you don't want to see that, uh, click away. But um, feel free to leave a comment and subscribe and leave me a thumbs up. It helps up my channel. I also have uh, Instagram and a Patreon linked below if you feel like donating. It could be something as simple as a dollar a month or two dollars or five, whatever you feel like you can pledge to me would really help me out because I am really minimally employed. I have my disability with my back and it prevents me from doing work that I'm able to do. And I live off a limited income because of it. Um, and again, it's a, a result of injuries, not just from, I had a major injury at work, but I have been injured because of my gender and sexuality. So it's made me physically disabled and uh, any kind of contribution helps me to move forward with my life in a, a more comfortable way where I'm not struggling so much. So, yeah, if you don't want to see the tea shot that's up next, I do a description of how to do your testosterone injections. Uh, and if you're uncomfortable with needles, I do show that part, so you might want to skip past the rest of the video. All right, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Make sure you don't get dog drool on your stuff. Um, this is a uh, dog test roll. Comes in a package like this. Bottles like this. Sometimes the uh, syringes come with a smaller gauge needle attached. And this is the uptake. 18 gauge. 
and then I just warm the solution between my hands by rolling it back and forth. This is a shirts container, which I always forget to put in the video. Um, but it opens, it has a safety latch, and you open it like this. Or you can, um, I guess, use this hole somewhere here. I don't really know how this part works, but um, maybe that's nothing. I don't know. Usually I just take the end off and throw it in there when I'm done. But that looks like that. And then this whole container can be brought to your hospital or your doctor to be disposed of properly. And um, since I take it once a week, 52 weeks a year, and there's two tips, like it'll take some time to fill this up, probably a year or so. You might want to get rid of it every six months or whenever you're having your physical or whatever. Um, so I just pop that open and just keep it sterile, don't touch the tip or the syringe. So when I do this and take the end off that I'm going to use, because it's not in its own package, I just put it back into there, and then take the sterile 18 gauge and put the lower lock system together like that, pull the package off, that looks like that, and then I drop back a bit to get some air inside of there to then pressurize the container that I'm drawing the solution out of. Squeeze that into the container and draw back the oil solution. Sorry if it's awkward to see. Like, I don't know where I should be here. <laughs> Even though I've taped every single one of these, I'm not very good at taping these. Well, I mean, before, up until this past year, actually, I've never talked on the videos, so... Let me know if you want to see the other videos. I mean, I was thinking of just editing them into this. All the tips just sticking me, but... <laughs> it's a very appealing kind of video, so... But yeah, I will eventually post them all. But in the other videos, I don't go through this whole process at all. So yeah, I just put on the smaller diameter tip. Squeeze out the excess air until drop comes out, and then that brings me to my 0.5 cc mark on the syringe. And I set that down, put it aside, and uh, alcohol swab the area next, and do the injection. Center of my bum is here, and that's the outside of my hip. So you just want to go find the center area, and go on the outside, and then top to bottom from halfway up somewhere from halfway up to the top of your hips. If you're not sure where the ridge of your hips is, find your hip bone here. Wrap your thumbs around towards the center of your back, and that's the center line of of the top of your glutes. So just go out the swampy area, get your prepared needle, make sure, again I just push out a tiny little drop, make sure there's no air in it, relax the muscle, inject in, pull back a little bit, there's no vein, and 
you would know because a little drop of blood would go into the syringe when you pull back a little bit. And it doesn't hurt to do that. And plunge her in and then you're all done. Put a band-aid on that. And then it'll band-aid. Almost out of regular band-aids. I can even find it. Yep, oh, there it is. It's just a little dot of blood where the syringe went in. And that's it. That's how you do your uh, testosterone injection. Don't forget to uh, use your sharps container. So, just open her up. And uh, I usually take these uh, tips out of the little plastic holder because you can just recycle the little plastic holder. It's actually a tip that uh, needs the safe disposal. And then that also allows you to, I mean, I probably have 40 of them in there, um, just save on space. And with this, it's just unscrew, take the tip out, put it in your container, and then Fasten that up. I also tend to want to leave it upright, or if it's in a other container in my bathroom, then I kind of throw a bunch of things in. So I just make sure it's kind of in that kind of angle because it does get a bit like goopy inside. I don't know if you can see that, but it gets a lot of. Um, testosterone oils and residues like all over the inside and not that it's gonna you can see it on the edge of there it's not gonna leak out or anything most likely from this but I could it might get on something I don't know and uh, all these bits they're just uh, plastic things so you can probably put them in the recycling all these things can be um, put into recycling. Make sure to get a container from your service provider and be safe. Yeah, give me a thumbs up and a, a like, and subscribe, and leave me a comment if you want. If you have ideas about uh, what to make videos about, let me know. Um, maybe next I'll like try to think of some positive side effects, like. Some of what I said could be positive side effects. It gave me a tremendous amount of drive, sexual interest, interest in changing my life and getting healthier and going to school and looking for connections with people. So those, those are all positive things as well. Uh, depends on how you look at it, I guess. But yeah, that's it for this week. Um, leave me a comment and uh, subscribe. All right, have a great week. See you next time.